Alright, hello and welcome back to part number 29 of the Dwarf Fortress Collaborative Series. I'm your host, Puker Choo Choo, and welcome back to the Braided Bolt. So, in the last episode, we ran into a siege and a forgotten beast laying uh, above ground and below ground, respectively. Um, now that, uh, well, I, I essentially continued the game where we had, uh, where we had saved off, and it looks like the siege is actually starting to pull back. Um, I haven't really played it past here, but what I can show you guys is that um, currently there's only actually four or three goblins still present on the map. Um, these invaders appear to be running if we actually zoom on them. They are, where are they, where are they? Yeah, they're on the edges of the map here, and they appear to be, um, yeah, making their way off the map. See this guy right here? He, yeah, he's going to get, yeah, he's, uh, they're staying to bail after losing two of their, um, two of their people. Now it's actually down to one guy, uh, the Goblin Mace Man, and he is the Sieges' leader, and he is, well, he's, he's on our roof, apparently, and... You know, this guy is actually, how did he get up here is uh, what I'm wondering right now. And, um, no, oh, now he's dead, but, uh, but yeah, he, he managed to get up here. And this might be because of, uh, I see a giant bat being dead here. Now, some of these, uh, we were, we were rather lucky in that, uh, is there a giant bat up here dead? Yeah, there is actually. Um, we were rather lucky, we're, yeah, we were rather... Um, you know, I feel like I'm repeating ourselves, but we were lucky in the fact that we uh, we didn't encounter any trolls or anything like that. Things that could smash through the walls, because um, if things could smash through the, the constructed things, the guard tower probably would have been destroyed. And uh, with the demise of the guard tower, you actually get a little side entrance into the back of the fortress like that. So... Um, yeah, we were we were definitely lucky in that the first siege didn't see any trolls or anything like that. But um, what you what you can expect is that sometimes the dwarves or the uh, the goblins they bring um, these mounts for themselves, and these mounts can be like typical mounts like horses and stuff like that. But in this event, it looks like the uh, the goblin maceman uh, person he was actually riding on top of a giant bat. Um, when he showed up, so yeah, that was uh, that was something to to see. And this guy, this giant bat, looks like it brought him to the top of the guards tower because we didn't seal the door up here. And it looks like uh, one of our doors did manage to handle him, brawl him down, and get rid of him. So that is rather nice. And now the map is actually clear of, uh, or rather the ups, the top of the map here, is clear out of uh, invaders. So what we're going to do is that we've actually ran out of trees to put into the smelter. So we're going to designate a large area to, uh, to cut down here. Got this. Are we on the run Z level or something, or is my keyboard broken? Huh, apparently, uh, yeah, the, the mouse program overrode the regular door fortress uh, system of designation. So now I had to click on all of these trees individually. Um, we'll get, run it for a little bit and see if it uh, stays like that. Nope, now it's gone. There we go. So we'll designate a very, very large area to just kind of strip forest down, and we have the uh, we have a lot of woodcutters as now. So yeah, that should get underway in just a second when we open up the doors right here. Somebody actually made a pretty valid point in that apparently these uh, these traps actually block in merchants, so we're going to get rid of them. And uh, yeah, I actually didn't know about this. Now, generally speaking, oh. The Forgotten Beast, uh, Solasto, has uh, actually made its way over here to the doors. I don't think this guy's a building destroyer. But he's hovering outside and it looks like he's trying to get up to the upper levels of a fortress. Uh, what I can do here, and I think I'll do this, is that, you know, we, we can keep the vampire locked down here. I'll check if the doors up here are locked. but. I have a feeling that not a lot of people want to uh, to really keep the vampire or convert our fortress into a, into a dwarven vampire fortress. So what I can do is that I can kind of just let this guy uh, die if we choose to send him out here. 
I mean, I've locked all the doors behind them, so it's probably not... Yeah, it's not going to be a huge issue if, uh, if we do send them out to his demise like that. So yeah, that's kind of that. And over here, what we can do now is that, uh, I think we'll, I think we'll trade with the, the, uh, these people right here, the, the elves, and we'll get, uh, some trade going on here and we'll send them some, some goods. Yeah, typically when I build these trade depots, I build them outside of the fortress's defenses. So then the uh, the caravans' as guards, or whoever is part of the caravan, will do some fighting. And then hopefully they take down like one or two uh, invaders before anything major happens. And it, it, they're like, yeah, they're really rather expendable. <laughs> like that. And we have to move some trade goods over here, so we'll do that too. I'm considering starting to produce like anvils and just trading those, but anvils are pretty heavy, so we do have to keep that in mind. These are the elves, so they, they don't take anything made out of wood, so we're going to have to like individually designate each and every single um, trade good we have inside that list. Yeah, we'll stockpile that area like that, trade with them, and now we have to just do something like that. So I think we we might have done some trading last time or uh, inside one of these videos, but how I generally do the trades is that we want to look for a few very specific uh, things when we want to trade with these people, namely food. Um, your dwarves do get sick and tired of drinking the same types of uh, wine and the same types of food um, after an amount of time, so variety is definitely good. and. Um, the, the added bonus of that is that sometimes when do when dwarves have fey moods, they may decide that they want to uh, grab very very um, odd items such as like uh, cave fish bones or something like that. And it's just like you know where where the hell am I gonna find those right? And um, just to kind of alleviate the chance of uh, having one of your doors go berserk simply because you don't have um, something like that, like you know spider web silk or yeah, just really. Uh, really situational stuff like that um what we can do here is that we can trade for those goods but what i'm actually going to do here is that i see that the elven merchants actually carry a full stockpile of wood atop their their two elephant uh things that they have here so we're actually going to take all of their wood all of their ropes here none of their trade goods i want to keep some of their cages because um i kind of brought this up earlier but i do want to uh do some sort of gladiator battle type of thing later on. Um, I think I'll leave that to um, to Riot House or something to build, but yeah, I think we'll leave some stuff like that to them. Um, but just in case, I want to start buying some of those cages right now. I think I'll buy some cloth simply because it's um, it's good to keep some of that around along with some spread uh, thread. Now that they have the whole hospital thing. Yeah, we don't need this many, uh, all of this cloth though. So we're gonna come down here, um, buy some rubber wood arrows, just for the sake of it. Buy some of these wooden arrows for training purposes. I'd much rather not make these ourselves. And, you know, I'm actually not really sure what exactly here is the, uh, is the food item, so we'll buy them all. Um, buy the, some of the wood splints, and we'll, we'll let the door, we'll let the, uh, the elves get away here with a ton of profit. So I'm just going to remove like uh yeah two bins of goods and what we'll do now is I'll we'll just double check that we haven't uh, pissed them off by trading them anything with wood inside. That seems good. So we'll send that over. He says, ah, wonderful, thank you for your business. And we uh, we essentially end trade like that, moved goods from this area. So we'll bring back the bins and that can essentially cons concludes trading with them right there. 
And uh, for Fort Defense now, we do have to do something about Fort Defense. And what I think I'll do is that we have a guards tower right here. And what I can do is that I can carve out these ramps here and make this area kind of a block a blocked out, block outed area. And over here, what we can do is uh, we can place down some do uh, doors for us here. Build a well as well. And yeah, nowadays, uh, you generally, like, everybody starts out with, like, the stuff to build a well. All you really need to do is build the blocks. Um, when I played it, like, the wells were sort of a secondary thing, and you really didn't pick them up. Um, unless you you kind of felt like you needed one. Uh, but for now, what we're going to actually do is that we're going to use this well more or less as a morale booster than, uh, than anything. What I'm going to do here is that I'm actually going to get rid of the uh, the majority of the ramps here. I think I'll leave. Uh, yeah, I think I'll leave two. And my reasoning for that is that sometimes dwarves get themselves covered with a lot of icky uh, stuff, and when they do get covered with a lot of icky stuff, they they have the tendency. Oh, actually, we can get rid of one more. They have the tendency of um, contaminating the water with uh, like blood of various different um, things. So yeah, we're going to do something like that. We're going to build some levers now. And we will build one here. And we'll build one here. What I plan on doing is that I want to... Uh, yeah, I don't want to link this lever. Nope, don't want to remove it. I just don't want to link that lever to... Um, to the floodgate up here anymore simply because it's it's a little bit of a risk and I think um and I think this looks a little better too having levers on both sides so we'll do something like that and then at this point as soon as the uh, the architecture gets done we'll be able to build ourselves a functioning well so that's fairly good Now, what are our dwarves uh, doing underneath here? They still have some area to carve out, and our dwarves are still digging, so we'll let them do that. But um, to make a sec, I want to make a secondary uh, little place to do tree farming now. So I think we'll start off here, and what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to designate some hectares of land here. For the purpose of being converted to horizontal tree farms, I feel like these are not as efficient on a... Oh, we've actually reached the map edge here. I feel like these horizontal ones aren't as efficient as having like a... Like an artificial tree farm in your base. But I guess they can work. So we're going to go with a... I think a six plot setup. I don't... I want to avoid the water here, but it looks like a... It looks like we're going to have to go into that slightly. So we'll do something like that, and then we'll just kind of connect the places like that. You know what, make this make this look all nice and pretty, so we'll connect it like that, and that'll give us um, roughly five and a half plots, more, yeah, more than like, more than that. This area will slightly um, go into this area, but it's no real big deal, so that's good. And there appears to be a single tile uh, little thing right here. So we'll, uh, well, we'll leave that as it is, and digging in soil is much faster than digging inside the, um, the earth down here, so they should be able to build that fairly fast. Now, as for the mechanists, I want them to connect that to that, and this to this. So there, they will build two, uh, two little things like that, which will allow us to control how much water gets in here. Now this well we can then designate as a little bit of a meeting hall area and I want to only go that far as to designating the rooms simply because I don't want the dwarves getting anywhere close to these two um, water spelts if you will. 
And my reasoning for that is because if they do go near them, I'm afraid that because, you know, we've just gone through a siege, somebody here is going to be co coated with uh, with door, um, some sort of blood, and you can contaminate the wells if, uh, you can contaminate the water supply, right? If you do have some nasty stuff like that inside there, and yeah, I just don't want to uh, risk something like that. Hmm. Um, somebody actually mentioned something about fuel last game, and I, I actually deliberately, uh, I, yeah, I checked this before recording. Um, somebody said that apparently wood, or rather wood furnaces generate four units of fuel, uh, rather than one from bur burning uh, wood into charcoal here. And I've actually checked up on the uh, the DF 2012 fuel page, and it's, uh, well, it says here it's about the current version of DF, and I've actually specifically searched up charcoal too and that actually just redirects me to this page so um, you'll see down here inside coke it'll actually say that coke um, created from bituminous coal produces nine units and lignite produces four units but it actually doesn't mention anything about creating fuel from wood apart from the fact that you can do it um, using like a wood furnace and stuff like that and it actually doesn't say how much uh, f stuff that you produce with uh, a single log unit so yeah, that was, uh, that's kind of odd, but alright. And now... Miners should be busy doing their own little thing. So, with that said, we should have, uh, yeah, we should have adequate time now to start off, um... Start this thing off, so what we're going to do is that we are going to open up... The, uh, the little fountain here and hopefully we'll be able to get this running in just a little bit and in the meantime um you know we we have a pile of uh dwarven corpses so we're going to uh, open up some of the burial reserves down here for them to uh, come down here because i just remembered that uh we did lose a few dwarves here um yeah we took down a goblin maceman and his trusty giant bat in two last years and in the process we lost a few fishery workers, a ranger, and a mechanic. Now, I'm not sure if all of these are uh, our losses from this siege. They may have been, they may not have been, um, but the point is that we've lost those people. So, um, yeah. Now, this wooden pull lever, we will, or mudstone lever, we'll pull. And that's going to open up the floodgates for our waterfalls right here. This guy should really be uh, standing inside the designated zone. And that's going to put water down here. And what it's going to do is that you'll see here that some mist is being generated. And this mist gives the dwarves a happy, happy uh, type of mood modifier. And it looks like, yeah, the well is now active. Mist is coming down upon our dwarves. And I hope that all of these dwarves are clean so that there's no blood getting in down here. So yeah, that's going to let that go, and um, now that we have uh, accumulated some water, we're going to open up the second floodgate. So now this uh, water is going to come down here, and it's hopefully going to flood all of these levels. It may not reach it, but you know what? That's no big deal, and as it does that, uh, it'll um, hopefully drain, drain into down here, where then it will uh, either evaporate or stay there forever. So yeah, that's kind of that. Apparently a Dwarven baby has drowned. Yeah, somebody threw a baby down here. Great. First day opening up the pool and people are already drowning and blood has come apart. So yeah, <laughs> really, really odd. Um, but the good thing about this well is that, I, you know, personally, because of the, uh, because of how how much food we have here I, I really don't think we'll be using this well as a well in the sense that we gain drinking uh, water from it we're probably going to be uh, using this place as a bit of a let me see preferences we're going to use this place mainly as a place to give our doors positive uh, mood modifiers is what um, we're probably going to be using it for. So what's going to happen is that dwarves really really like waterfalls and that when they generate mist they give these dwarves a positive um, mood outlet and I'll see if I can remember where we actually see that. There we go. So yeah, this person has been quite content lately. He was, uh, he had a good bedroom, had admired some fine things. Doesn't say anything about the waterfall, so we'll switch over to another person in just a little bit here as the water kind of flows around. 
and we'll check these people too. Let's see if they have noticed that the waterfall is here. Nope. This person actually had a lot of stuff happening over here. Now, I don't know if they actually need to stand inside the mist for the thing to appear, but um, yeah, it does give them... Yeah, there we go. Um, she has been satisfied at work lately. She was irritated by the sun lately. She was comforted by a lovely waterfall lately. So that is, uh, that's kind of that. And that will gradually give our dwarves a positive mood outlet. So, I, I, you know, come to think of it, I think they have to stand inside the mist. But um, yeah, gradually that'll happen. And hopefully with these designations, no more babies will drown. Um, but if it does happen, I mean, it's no big deal. So yeah, that will, uh, well, that's the waterfall level down here now. Yeah, you have some, uh, some blood coming down into the water, but it's well away from the well, from the, uh, from the well, actually. So it's no big issue. And right now we are just going to have to evaluate how much water we need to, uh, to be able to successfully flood those lower levels without putting too much strain on the, uh, on the little reservoir I've made here. Um, speaking of that, we are probably digging out this area right now. Yes, we are. Lots of doors are working on that. So that is, uh, that is very good. And I've already seen, I already see one young fungi wood growing. So that is good. Now, what is this stockpile full? Apparently armor. So, uh, somebody has produced a lot of, uh, a lot of copper equipment. Some copper pickaxes, copper, uh battle axes, copper, stuff like that. I'm gonna check these bins some more. There's actually nothing inside that bin. And that's the armor, and that's the helmets bin over there. So stockpile settings here. Let's check uh, what can actually be stored inside this area, so. Yeah, we can store armor, additional options. Yeah, store armor. And weapons and traps components. Okay, so that's good. Um, so with that kind of said, we're, we probably will be starting to produce some um, some objects here. And what I think I'll do is that I will produce our guys a full set of iron helms and iron iron shields, I suppose. Now. Yeah, the game does have an elaborate combat system in which it's really rather excessive. I mean, individual like layers of skin and stuff are um, are now like simulated when come when it comes to like damage projections and all of that. And it's really rather excessive in all areas. And that oh, what has happened here? Um, oh, migrants have arrived. Great. Yeah, hopefully they hopefully these elephants or whatever those things are rat that kills all of them. The mayor has been apparently possessed and has taken possession of one of our uh, metalsmith forges. So we'll see how what he builds. And these, oh great, now I don't have time to check all the migrants. Adequate Thrasher, um, Spiridorf, Marksdorf, Maestorf, Maestorf. I'm kind of waiting um, before I do like the nicknames thing, if I do the nicknames thing, simply because I'm probably going to say that everybody who's come, who uh, who has come in year three will be, yeah, these guys will probably be drafted into the military or be used as expendables for the next little while. So just keeping that in mind, we, uh, we probably will be losing a lot of these uh, new migrants. And with that said, I, I really don't think that it'd be worth the time of of getting them nicknames and stuff like that. And apparently the mayor has uh, has started his mysterious construction. So that is good. We built some bins here. And we'll also build some more jugs and pots. And that will, uh, yeah, that'll conclude that. How is the flooding going down now? Um, there's going to be three more levels before it completely floods out, and I feel like that's going to be enough, uh, water, so I think we will actually shut down the, uh, 
the waterfall for now, and we'll, uh, we'll really see how much drains down there. Because my plan really isn't to keep the well occup like uh, working the waterfall 24-7. That's more or less meant to be a gradual thing. And later on, if we want, we can put a pressure plate up here, which goes off when the water goes above the, uh, the third mark. And then when we do that, it can kind of have a self-regulating waterfall where it only lets a gradual amount of water enter and leave. So uh, yeah, we can also do that too. That's also another option. Still don't know how the baby got inside the water supply, but you know what? You know, first day, pool opens, somebody pooped in it already. Oh well. <laughs> and let's see, so this level is, um, yeah, there's a lot of ones and a lot of twos, and if you, if you haven't kind of figured it out by now, the water can reach a maximum level of seven, the minimum is one, and it'll start, uh, ooh, made a brown, bronze cage apparently. And um, it'll actually evaporate when it's at um, at level one, so the water will just kind of disappear on its own. Um, on all other levels, I believe, it will actually just kind of stay around. So we do have to watch for that. It would have been better if we were cle if we uh, cleared out all of this area of the rocks, but you know what? No big deal. We can always do that afterwards and reflood the area. So yeah, these guys are actually working on taking out the rocks, but they are going to do that very very slowly. And how is work over here? Decent, but uh, not perfect. Let's see how many other people have died, apparently. I see some other guy, some sort of a uh, farm shop handler has died. Can we, uh, can we zoom onto him? No. Probably met its, his end somewhere. Out inside the wilderness. Or maybe he drowned. Well, they got rid of the baby, so that's good. Well, that's the gist of the well area. We can, yeah, we can wait until the uh, the water goes down a little more, and then we can flood it again, and then we can wait until it goes down a little more and flood it again. But I think I will put some sort of automated plate system up here, so that it gradually throttles the water in just a little bit. Now that, uh, well, I see that uh, I saw that inside one of the. Um, one of the mood outlets, it showed that we actually do have a legendary dining hall. So that's going to keep our doors happy. The waterfall is going to help occasionally, um, every now and then. And the kitchen should be actually constantly making easy meals, so we'll switch that back on. And for now, I think everything will be good. Uh, let's see what we have produced so far in terms of metal goods, if we have produced any. Produced a lot of those metal shields, but we haven't produced any of those, um, yeah, because we were interrupted. Those iron helms, so we'll do that. And yeah, apparently, um, with the new weapon system, they, they, yeah, they upgraded it from what I used to know from about it, um, around the year 2011-2012-ish. I would assume 2012, seeing as how that is apparently the new bigger, big update. Um, apparently certain materials are really, really good at making certain weapons, such as silver making, uh, silver warhammers. Um, I think it's due to, like, the, the weight of the material and how available it is for silver and some other things about it, but yeah, um, those Warhammers, their damage depends on weight, and obviously if you if you have some silver, which is uh, heavy and I guess fairly common to some extent, um, you can make some of those. And these guys are working and doing something, and it has been almost 30 minutes, so I think I'll call it a day. Uh, we have the waterfall set up now, now it's uh, more or less just about optimizing it, and soon we should be- Oh, we have already seen some m muddy shrubs and some muddy young fung funga wood growing, so that is rather nice. Maybe afterwards when we remove all of the stone, um, this area can, uh, can you know, kind of really grow into a large scale uh, farming area. I think what I'll do inside the next few episodes is that I'll gradually improve this area by building a grate so that fish can't get inside very easily. Um, like, yeah, when I played it, there were a lot of carp, and these uh, these carps were the equivalent of, like, sea elephants, so, um, so yeah, they're kind of that. I don't think they're, yeah, I don't think they're present on this map, but I still don't want any, like, rodents getting in to the fortress like that, so I'll try to keep them out like that. Um, 
I'll build a grate for sure. And I think I'll actually build some metal grates um, on the sidelines here so then we don't have any more babies falling in. So I'll see you guys then um, when we continue building the wall, continue expanding the, uh, the mining industry and really go from there.